everybody. talked about themes. Yeah. We ever talked about themes? Does that sound funny to you? Okay. So your theme for this whole thing, you played like probably over 30 bars just. That was your theme. One, two, three, four, tita, one. Right? So uh, that was your theme. So then you moved it around to the toms. You moved it up onto the cymbals. You had all these different things that you did, but you carried that one theme with you. Okay? When you carry themes like that, that it's useful for when you're creating songs. When your dad gives something to me, I try to theme it a little bit. I try to come up with an idea that I want to repeat. I want something that uh, sounds good. But if you change your theme too much, then your listener can't hang on to it. But if you pick one and you stick with it, then your listener knows what to expect and they really like it, usually. I mean, unless they just happen to not like the theme. But they like the idea. It's, we've talked about form, right? So in a way, you were using a form. About every eight measures or so, give or take, sometimes we had some, uh, you know, nines or <laughs> eleven measure phrases. But, uh, you know, you were changing it every eight-ish bars, which is good. That's the kind of thing that you want to do. You can build up the energy. You can move into the chorus. You can come down for the verse. You can break it all the way down. You can do all these kinds of things. But you have one little theme that you follow. So I wanted to at least bring attention to that, okay? Because that was my favorite part. You had some other stuff that was cool. I liked when you were playing straight. And then you would kind of throw in like a triplet feel for a little bit and then come back. That's like, ooh, that's neat, right? You gave them a little, little different flavor and then you came back, okay? So the more frantically you switch what it is that you're doing, the less the listener can follow it and the less they're probably going to like it for the most part, okay? So when you're creating, do stuff like that. Come up with something that's really cool and then figure out all the different ways that you can make that same rhythm but on different drums. Oh, I found something cool that I like. Yeah? It's like eerie ghost note. Well, it is a unique sound. You don't see a lot of those. Usually when there's a crash symbol, it's a snare drum and a bass drum. Yeah, because the tom rings. Okay, cool. So, that's also just stuff that you can spend time doing at home too. You can uh, just practice being creative. Okay, because people are going to ask you to come up with stuff, and it's good for you to have ideas. 
Let's see what we got. They, that's for loud stuff on the guy. So before we jump into our book, because we're going to be in our book for a while. Um, sure, I did promise we could do it. But then we're going to do Mambo. Okay.